KiCad video, we're going to have a look at how to create mesh or terrain or the site if we want. So we're using the same template as we've been using for the last six videos. All I've done is brought in or dragged in a image and this was uh, from Council website which provides some information so it's not perfectly accurate for a site and it's not a survey as such but this one has topographical lines, has contours and it has the size of the site. I've just redrawn this as a fill over there so we can see the shape of the site. Now we could, and I have in the past, used the mesh tool to draw the shape of the site. What I found is it's sort of a, a dumb thing to do because what happens is it makes it harder to draw because it's an awkward shape. So it's probably better to stick with a standard shape rather than making it a new one. Now what we'll find here is I haven't done anything to these settings. Again, this is just the way that Archicad's created it. So we go to the mesh tool, but we see that the layout that it's chosen for the site, mesh site to go on is currently turned off. It's called mesh site M, so that's cool. But it, when I click, it'll say it's not currently visible. So I'm gonna have to say show layer or choose layer and choose a different layer. So we're gonna say show. Now I'm gonna draw a box. Whenever I draw anything in Archicad, I've got multiple methods. So I could draw using a polygonal method, which just means click, 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 click. And of course we could make that straight or not. I can use a rectangular method, two point rectangular, click top right, click, sorry, top left, click bottom right. So two point method, I'm pressing um, Command Z to undo by the way. I could use the rotated rectangular method. So click top left, click top right, extend along that axis or perpendicular. So these are the different methods, they all pretty much do the same thing. We're going to leave this one now. This gives me my mesh, but it hasn't described the contours to it. That's our next job. We're not going to worry about the height, we're not going to worry about anything. Now to define our contours, we're going to go down to our More tool. We'll just reduce design so we can see it. And down the bottom, four from the bottom, is the Spline tool. Now the Spline tool is a organic curve. So it will produce a straight line if we draw from point A to point B. And then if we draw from point A to point B to point C, it'll draw arc or a series of arcs in order to be able to move from A, B, C as smoothly as possible. Uh, you could also say it's like a, a driving line or maybe skiing, downhill skiing, trying to get from one point to the other as efficiently as possible using as gentle a curve as possible but of course the more points we add the tighter we can make that curve. Now for this exercise I don't need to be perfect I don't need to map this completely accurately and to make it faster I'm going to do it roughly just so it doesn't take forever. Of course if this is a real survey and I want it to be accurate the more times I click the more accurate it becomes. Now what's very important is that when I do this spline line I have to start outside of my mesh and finish outside of my mesh otherwise it won't define the edge and it will make more work for me later. So lots of clicking which I'm sure might be a bit frustrating if you're watching this as a video. So I'll try to reduce the clicking as much as possible. So if I didn't mention this, to finish the spline line, we double click at the end. So click once to start, click again to continue the line. Every time we click, it places a point. That point we call a node, which is effectively a reference point, which allows us to then stretch or adjust. Now splines are smoother. The less reference points they have, the less nodes they have. and it takes longer the more points you have. Now if you're trying to turn a really small corner you need to add more no nodes, more points. There's just no other way around it. Otherwise what can happen is you can accidentally invert your spline and for this we definitely don't want to have an inverted spline which means it's crossing across itself because that's going to screw up our contour lines. It's going to confuse Archicad. Now, of course, you might be wondering, how, am I, how do I know where those contour lines are? I don't, I'm guessing. I'm making it up. And the point is that I, I know where they are on my site, but 
what I'm trying to do is show a representation of what might be happening with the contour lines beyond my site. Uh, why is this important? Apart from being a simple square or a rectangle just to make life simpler, when we put buildings on our site and we want to do a shadow diagram, of course, if we're probably going to be extending a shadow over our site onto someone else's site, it's really helpful to be able to know where that is. Now I've currently got some information already on this drawing. If I delete this fill or I'll put this onto a different story perhaps. When I look at this drawing we see that there's numbers. That's 438, 439, 440. So 440 meters above sea level. That's my AHD, that's my reference height. I don't have to worry about that just yet, but what I'm going to do is to select all of this, except for the, um, the image. How did I do that? Left click, two point selection. Again, top left, bottom right. You can do this in many different ways, and it depends on the settings that you've got. I know people that have used AutoCAD might prefer to use a different method of selection. So in ArchiCAD, based on our tool, our selection tool, or our arrow tool, we can use this method, which is partial elements. So if I just touch it, it'll be selected. There's the entire elements, or there's direction dependent. So let's have a look at what each of those mean. This option, partial, means if I click on part of it, it'll select it. If I click on all of it, it'll still select it, and it doesn't matter which orientation I click on it, it'll still work. If I do the other option, entire element. If I do not click on all of a particular element, it won't select it at all. So I have to completely encompass that element to select it. And of course, the final option is direction dependent. So if I go top left to bottom right, it's partial, it's, sorry, it's entire. If I go bottom right to top left, it's entire. the other way around if that makes sense. So if you've used that function in AutoCAD before or if you just think it's a cool function uh, you can definitely do that. I find it a little bit frustrating. Um, I tend to just use this one which is called the partial. Now of course we've also got the ability to define how we select. So just like with the mesh tool that could be polygonal, it could be two-point rectangular or it could be rotated rectangular. So there's a myriad of options on any tool to choose from. It's up to you how you want to work. Uh, of course ArchiCAD has a standard but it doesn't mean that we necessarily need to use that one. So we're going to select everything except the background image. I'm going to cut it. How do we cut? We could go edit, cut. We could go right click, cut. Or I could do on my Mac, command X. And then I'm going to go up to my terrain story and paste. Now that's going to paste the mesh and the splines on my terrain story. So I'm part way there. Now to do this you have to get this exactly right. So follow this closely. Select the mesh. Select the mesh tool. We find that under design. Now in order to make these splines fit the mesh, we're going to use the magic wand tool. So that is spacebar, turns my cursor into a magic wand and by clicking on the spline we're using that as a reference line and we want to say fit to user ridges and that's going to add those nodes, add the shape of the spline to my mesh. You see that my mesh is still selected, you see, so you see I'm still selecting the mesh tool and so when I'm finished, I have a mesh and it now has these lines or dots or nodes added to the tool. Now I'm going to select that inverse select by holding shift and then select again, which will mean I'll select all of my splines. I could also have just gone down to more, clicked on the spline tool and then clicked command A or control A on a PC and that would select all the splines, edit, cut, and I'll place them up onto a different story as well. So we could place them up onto the basement floor or the ground floor, for instance. Now I'll go back to terrain. I'm going to make sure that this mesh says 
in terms of how it's displayed, floor plan display, home story only. I'm not going to get into too much details of this now because I could spend a lot of time on it. Now that we have our mesh, we'll see that when we go into 3D, show selection marquee in 3D or show all in marquee, it doesn't really matter at the moment because it's the only thing that will be on our model. We see currently it's flat. So we have these points. I'm going to turn off my editing plane. But it currently doesn't have any value, doesn't have any height. So it's not really helpful for a mesh. So what we need to do now is add in height values. Now again, they're down on the bottom story. So I could go back down to my survey reference. Now, I could potentially do this as a trace reference. So go back up to my terrain story, right click on AHD, show as trace reference. Now, sometimes this will work, sometimes it won't work, particularly if it is an image. So in this case, I'm just going to, because it's pretty easy, remember what the numbers are. So this is 440, and we're going down from 440 up to terrain. All right, select my mesh, click on one of the internal points on each one of those contours, go across to the Z value, and I'm going to type this in in millimeters. So 440000, and I want to click apply to all, which means it's going to apply that height to every one of these black dots. Now, not much is going to happen at this point, but then when I click on the next one, do the same thing. 439000. It's going to start to create height values, and because it's a very long way out of the ground, it'll look a bit strange for a while. Let's keep adding those in. Select, click, make sure it's on the Z438000. Let's do this fast. 437000 Now I've done all of my internals, but I haven't done the corners. We'll call this 432. And when we do the corners, we are not going to click apply to all. 434, sorry, Again, I'm not being precise, it doesn't matter. 98765. And it should create a mesh. We see that mesh is very tall, it's coming out of the out of the earth or out of the off the project zero a long way, but it's Consistent, and if it's consistent and it doesn't look ridiculously steep like a cliff, it probably means that you've done it correctly. If you've got bits on the corners that are going all the way down to here, it's probably that you left out grabbing one of those corners and elevating its height. Now, the colors that we see is defined by the building material or the surfaces. So we see that site earth is the standard material based on what we've done, and that's because the building material is called earth, but we've overridden the top surface, I didn't do it, again it was an automatic function of Archicad, and that's called gr grass dark green, and of course we could make that anything we wanted to, so we could make that any colour we wanted to, it really doesn't matter. Now, what do we do? Let's take this back down to the train story so we understand what's happening. We're going to go up to our basement story, which will be the next story, but to understand how this will work, we're going to right click into our story settings and then adjust the height of our building. Now I don't know yet, or I do, but I'm going to suggest I don't know, how high our basement height should be. How high should it be from 
terrain to basement. It should be so our building sits roughly on the natural ground level. So it depends, obviously, because our site's so large, whereabouts are we going to be sitting? We could just make a number up at the moment, which would be roughly in the middle. So that would be 437000. Okay. That's our terrain mesh. And in the next video, we're going to have a look at how to put a slab, a basement slab, into this site and how we can then start to build a building on top of that.